Welcome to Animator. This is Fredo. Animator is an extension dealing with the animation of objects and uh, cameras. So this video uh, introduces the basic concept of uh, Animator. So it explains the user interface and also will make a first uh, animation from uh, scratch. Animator comes with a toolbar, which is shown here with four icons. First one is the editor of animation. Second one is just a viewer. First one, a third one is a visit controller. Actually, it's not yet implemented. And we'll see what uh, is the fourth one, uh, which is a positioner, which records the position uh, of objects. Let's start the editor of uh, Animator and review the main element of the user interface. Actually, it should be more seen as a working environment because uh, Animator is more than uh, an extension doing a task and then uh, uh, closing. It's really like uh, uh, an application within uh, SketchUp. So an animation is complex, takes time to design so you'll spend a fair amount of time uh, within this uh, editor so the user interface is based on uh, graphical elements uh, the main one is the timeline this is where you put the element uh, of the animation and you organize them uh, in time okay so the timeline here is shown uh, on uh, vertically on the left. You can, if you have a bigger screen, put it on uh, the top uh, of uh, your screen. You can also uh, put it at the bottom if you prefer. Uh, so it's flexible. So myself, I use it uh, vertically. Uh, because it's more uh, compact. Then you have a set of buttons organized in uh, palettes. So you have actually uh, five main zones. Uh, one is uh, about the, the control of uh, animator and also the second one about the, the global parameters. We'll see uh, that later. This big uh, area is about playing the animation. For example, here I have the play button and I can start playing the animation. Uh, then you have the zone where you create and insert uh, elements of animation in the timeline. And the last set of button is really uh, to control or manage uh, your activity. Uh, you have a save button, undo, uh, redo, because everything you can you do in Animator can be undone and and uh, and possibly redone, and of course uh, the exit uh, button. So this is the working environment. Animator is interactive, therefore you can see uh, the animation uh, in uh, interactively. OK, so you can move the time in the timeline. It's also a parametric and we'll see that. That is whenever you have created an element, uh, 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 an animation or a, a sub animation, an element of animation, you can modify it uh, later. That's important because uh, you never uh, reach the final uh, uh, state uh, you wish uh, for an animation on the first attempt. So here is uh, the working uh, environment and this video is about uh, using the main uh, uh, concept uh, of animator to create a first animation from scratch.
before you create uh, an animation, there are two things you should care about. Uh, one is to structure your model uh, properly because animator will move objects and by objects I mean group or components. It will not move uh, raw geometry. Uh, therefore, it's a good idea to uh, organize the model you want uh, to be uh, managed by an animation into relevant group. It's also a good idea to give them meaningful uh, names. The second thing is that uh, in Animator you are going to move uh, objects. You may encounter problems, bugs, crashes, so it's always a good idea uh, to save the original position of object. This can be done with this uh, button, which is uh, Animator Positioner. So, uh, here you call it, you get a dialog box, okay, showing the position uh, of objects, and you save uh, the current position. Okay, so let's call it position original. Okay, now what the uh, positioner does is that if ever the object have been moved, you just press this button and you restore the, uh, uh, the positioner. Actually, I should do, I should, let's say, move this, uh, call the positioner and restore the position. Okay, so if ever you have problems in Animator, and uh, the objects have lost their original position, uh, you can uh, restore it, uh, which is, uh, I mean, a, a safeguard. Okay. Now let's create a, a first uh, movement. So I start animator, so everything is empty. The animation uh, we are going to create is enclosed in the top level, which is called a film. So uh, it's a new film, uh, it's called film one. And uh, let's uh, create a movement where we are going to move the forklift uh, along the uh, X axis, the red axis, okay, by a certain distance. So here you have uh, the creation of uh, various uh, things called sequences. I, I will come back to that. Uh, so here is uh, create a movement, okay, of different kind. You have translation, rotation, can create camera and other things. So if you uh, click this button, you create a new movement. Now you are going to uh, get this uh, palette of button. Here you retrieve uh, a zone where you can manage uh, the animation of the movement uh, you create. And here you have different movement. The first one, which is translation, uh, is the one we are going to use, but you have a, a, a screw a rotation, spin, scaling, uh, explode, and so on, uh, a long path, and uh, also apparition. Okay, so you, when you create a movement, you need first to indicate uh, the object you want to move. Okay, so uh, let's uh, say that we want to move the forklift. Because the forklift itself is composed of different uh, groups or components, you need to indicate which one you want to move. So just click, and here you have the hierarchy of, uh, of objects uh, uh, along what you have clicked. So here, obviously, we want to take the forklift. Now, it is selected. So let's select the translation. So the translation is going to be in a given direction. Uh, and with a certain offset. Okay, uh, when you are more advanced, you can see how to set 
a speed uh, but let's start with something uh, simple so we want to uh, move it so let's click on it and you are pretty much like in the natural uh, move uh, tool and let's uh, move it so here I move it by 10.1 meter I can type in the measurement uh, box in the VCB I can tap type 10 okay so here we have created a movement that takes the uh, forklift move it by 10 along the x-axis actually the reverse of the x-axis you can play this movement by clicking here and you see that it moves by 10 okay and you can uh, even play it interactively so very simple movement when you are done you click this button save the sequence and exit now the sequence we have created is here in the timeline okay so your animation uh, is now uh, created and here you see that uh, it's created with this movement along the timeline okay so let's stop here and uh, and see what we have done it's important to understand one of the foundation of animator which is uh, reusability so we have created a sequence uh, a translation which says move this forklift by 10 meters in the uh, red uh, direction uh, for uh, within two seconds okay so this was done with the sequence uh, editor okay this type of uh, palette now animator has inserted the sequence in the timeline and this is a clip element which is an instance of the sequence so the parallel with sketchup is very simple uh, it uh, has to do with uh, components when you create a component you create both a definition and a first instance of the component now when you have a component you can create other instances you can scale them rotate them move them okay so is the same principle uh, in animator this which is an instance hein, a clip element can be for example the duration can be increased so now we move the forklift by 10 meter in four seconds we can also move it along the timeline okay and as we will say we will see uh, we can uh, even change a number of parameters okay uh, we can for example make it longer for example if i uh, tune this uh, uh, dim factor i now can move uh, the forklift by 20 meters uh, the double of 10 okay so it, it is important to see that the sequence is still the same okay when i do double click the sequence all, uh, still says 10 meters two seconds okay but the clip element can be modified furthermore okay i can perfectly uh, go here and create a second instance of the, uh, the the movement so you see that now if you press this button there is uh, the sequence defined so you can reuse it okay by default it gets uh, two seconds huh, which is the default of of the, uh, of, of the sequence so now i have two elements created out of one sequence uh, in the timeline okay for example here I can uh, say this this uh, uh, clip element make it reverse direction okay therefore 
when I go to the timeline, I get this. That is now I reuse the sequence, but in the other direction. So the forklift goes back. Okay. So very important. Uh, you create sequences like component definition, and what you put in the timeline in the end is uh, simply a, a, a clip element, which is an instance of the sequence. Okay. For example, here I can remove this uh, sequence, uh, this clip element. Okay. So the sequence still exists here. And by the way, there is uh, still an instance of it uh, in the timeline. Okay, so that's very important to uh, remember uh, this criteria of reusability. Uh, I try to somehow mimic the, the behavior of uh, of SketchUp with components, definition, and instances. So let's restore uh, the animation as we wanted. So let's move uh, the uh, clip element uh, to the beginning of the animation. Uh, you can also do this by uh, clicking on uh, Start At. Uh, eventually, you can uh, have a dialog box to set it exactly. Uh, the duration. Uh, let's put it to four seconds, uh, and the other parameter we'll see uh, later on uh, what they mean. So this is the dialog box for the parameter of an element. Okay, you can uh, click close it if you want to, to make it appear. Then just uh, click on the uh, element. Okay, so. Now you can play the animation. Okay, so here is in a reverse uh, direction. Maybe let's put it back to the uh, forward uh, direction. Uh, so let's play again uh, the animation. So this is your animation uh, so far. You can navigate in the timeline interactively. Huh? Just click and drag to go to a particular uh, place. You can go back to the beginning, go to the end, and uh, you have a, a number of, uh, of other options. Okay, so don't worry too much for the time. Uh, everything is in second in Animator, uh, but in the end, it can be translated to a frame. You can also control uh, the speed. Huh? So. Uh, of uh, of the animation, for for example, if I multiply the speed by 10, now you see that I go uh, 10 times faster with exactly uh, the same setting, and I can also do it uh, with a slow time uh, motion. Okay, so you have control of these things. Uh, in general, when you build the animation, it, it's good to stay with a, a, a nominal speed of of one okay so very important you need to save the animation uh, and periodically like you need to save your model when you are uh, designing and modeling in sketchup uh, that's important because all the data are embedded in the model uh, and if you don't save you not only may not lose uh, pieces of animation uh, which are long to design but also uh, you may uh, corrupt somehow uh, the model and leave it in a, in a, um, a non, non standard way not the model itself hein, the animation let's say so to save you press uh, this button you see that by default when you save you will save both the animation in the model and because there is this small sketchup icon you will also save uh, the model. So this is a default where you save both the animation and the model. And that's important because if you save the animation but you don't save the model, it's like you don't you did not save anything. Okay. If you exit without 
uh, saving the, the model, uh, then the animation is recorded. All everything which is related to animator is saved in the model as uh, attribute of the, the model and, 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 and the objects. Okay, so here it is saved. I can now exit, and if I go back, okay, I'm back in the state where it uh, was uh, saved. I want to clarify a point related to durations. Here you have a clip element of four seconds. It is created out of a sequence which has two second duration. So you may wonder what is the relation between these two seconds and the four seconds. Actually, there is no uh, relation here. The two seconds is simply a default duration. It means that whenever you insert uh, this sequence in the timeline, by default, the clip element created, uh, the instance of this sequence, uh, will be two seconds uh, duration. If I change it to six seconds, okay, I save. So here, my uh, uh, animation, the, the clip element, still lasts four seconds. So it is in the timeline that you fix the real duration during the animation. Okay. Now, if I insert this sequence to create a new instance, so a new clip element, you see that by default, okay, it comes with a six second duration, which you can uh, perfectly uh, change uh, at will. Okay, so that's uh, the relation. Remember that when you uh, design a sequence, the duration is indicative and is simply the default. Okay, uh, of, uh, for the duration in a clip element, which you can further change. However, the sequence registers the movement, okay, and the movement is given uh, in uh, length, in angle, in, uh, and this is what the sequence really uh, contains. Now let's handle the rotation of the wheels to make uh, the movement of the forklift uh, more realistic. So first, let's get rid of this uh, clip element and also go back to uh, the beginning because the rotation of the wheels will go along the translation of the forklift. So to create a new uh, sequence, movement sequence, uh, I can either uh, click the new movement or simply double click. Okay. Now we are in the sequence editor. We need first to select an object. So let's select the first wheel uh, and then uh, select the second wheel. So I, you can either select it while you are in the selection mode, uh, which is this arrow. So you just select it or and or you can you can of course unselect it or if you are al already in the uh, movement mode uh, here is the spin we are going to use uh, you can simply press control and select uh, the the wheel okay so pressing control temporarily go to the selection mode okay so now uh, let's uh, use the uh, log the green uh, axis. So here uh, I make the rotation perpendicular to uh, to the wheel and uh, just click. Then a little bit like in the native rotation tool, I can uh, rotate uh, the wheel. So you see here that. Uh, the angle is minus 324 uh, degree. Uh, let's make it uh, 360. So minus 360, which I tap in the VCB. Okay, and uh, here is the rotation. So you've seen that here, the uh, rotation has happened 
uh, while the forklift was also translated. This is normal because we edit the sequence within the animation, okay, so which is sometimes uh, easier. So if I play uh, now the rotation of the wheel, you see that it happens uh, within the, with the, the translation of the forklift. Okay, if you want to just see uh, the rotation of the wheel uh, standalone, uh, independently of the animation, just press this button, which is play the sequence alone. So if you uh, press this button, you are just in the context of the sequence you uh, edit, and therefore you see that uh, the wheel uh, just uh, rotate without a translation of the forklift. Okay, so if you go back to the within context mode, then you see. Sometimes it's better uh, to use within context, sometimes uh, you want to just see uh, the sequence uh, itself. So let's save. And now we have here the uh, clip element created out of this. Uh, spin of the wheel. Okay, so indeed the best is to make it the same duration as the uh, translation so that you see something like this. Now you notice that uh, the rotation of the wheel is not really synchronous with the translation. Why? It's because we chose uh, 360 uh, degrees, whereas the, the exact value is a little bit different. So we are going to see how to modify this. So as said, Animator is a parametric animation program, which means that you can modify at any moment uh, the parameters of the uh, element of your uh, animation. So here we need to change the angle of rotation for uh, the wheels. Uh, so let's go to the uh, sequence uh, editor. <clears throat> let's go back to uh, the beginning. And uh, now we have a rotation of minus 360 uh, degree. And we need to change uh, this angle to make sure that uh, when the forklift moves 10 meters, uh, the uh, rotation of the wheel is synchronous. Uh, so this implies to measure the diameter uh, of the wheel. So uh, you have two uh, methods. One is you exit, so you save and you exit from animator and in SketchUp you measure uh, this uh, diameter and then you go back to animator uh, or you can temporarily exit uh, animator by pressing this button. So here, if I press this button, you see that you have a small dialog box where you can go back to animator when you are finished. So you are in SketchUp here. Okay, so you can press T to have the uh, measurement uh, tool in SketchUp, huh, the native uh, one, and measure the, the diameter of the wheel, which is roughly Two methods. Okay, so uh, let's uh, remove the the construction line and let's go back now to animator. So you need to modify uh, the angle. So let's put uh, the formula. So you have to trust me, but basically the formula will be 10 meter divided by the diameter of the wheel. So two meter multiply by 360 uh, degrees and divided by P, which is 3.1416 uh, to uh, make sure we have the angle uh, in degree. Okay, so now if I play the animation, the rotation of the wheel is synchronous, but the spin in the over uh, direction. That's because I did not uh, put the minus, okay, uh, which indicated the right direction. So if I put the minus now and I place the animation, so I have something which is now synchronous. So let's 
save this and now if I play the animation the rotation of the wheels appear more uh, realistic with the translation of the forklift. Now we have to take care of the wheel which are on the right of the uh, forklift. Uh, so you have two, two methods. Either you create uh, the spinning uh, sequence from uh, scratch or you can uh, reuse the sequence uh, we designed for the wheels on the left of the forklift uh, to uh, create a new sequence. Okay, so we can uh, make this second method uh, to illustrate uh, one capability of uh, animator. So first, uh, you select uh, the spinning sequence here and we are going to uh, copy it. Okay, so you have here an icon which is copy the selected element. So we press here and here you can insert in the timeline. Uh, this block is used to insert things in the timeline. You have now this uh, icon enable which is passed. So now we have uh, this uh, second uh, sequence, okay, uh, which uh, we are going to modify. So here we take uh, this uh, element and edit its sequence. Uh, we want to create another sequence. So uh, let's modify uh, and clone uh, the sequence because we want uh, a new one. So here this button will create a copy of the current sequence, okay, and leave the, uh, the original one unaffected. Okay, so here uh, it creates uh, a new sequence with name spin free. We can probably call it right wheel uh, spinning. Okay, now what we want to do is to change uh, the selection. We want this to apply to the wheels on the right. Okay, so let's remove the current uh, selection and instead select the wheel, the wheels on the uh, right side. Okay, if we play uh, the animation, you see that it's okay, except the wheels uh, go in the other direction. So we just need, therefore, to change the sign of the angle. So here, let's remove the minus sign. Okay, and now we have the uh, the the right the wheels on the right of the forklift moving uh, correctly. So let's save. Of course, because I, my sequence was two second, uh, by default, uh, the element is two second. So let's make it four seconds to be of the same duration as uh, the rest. And now, if I play the uh, animation, you see that the wheel on the left and the wheels on the right uh, rotate by uh, the correct uh, amount. Okay, so let's see this. Okay, so here the wheels on the right and let's verify that it's okay for the wheels on the left. Okay. So let's see another way to do uh, the same thing. So let's first remove uh, what we have done and go back to the translation and the spinning of uh, the wheels which are on the left. Okay, so here is the animation. Uh, by the way, uh, you have this button 
uh, to hide all the toolbar when you uh, play the animation. If I disable it, then I play the uh, animation uh, with the toolbar uh, visible. Okay. So uh, so let's uh, so we want another uh, element. So let's uh, go to the beginning and insert the uh, spin uh, to uh, movement. You see, by the way, that even if you deleted the element uh, for the right wheels, it's still uh, uh, visible in the in in the list of sequences. Okay, so when you it's like in SketchUp, huh? when you delete an object, its definition. So here the sequence. Uh, still exist uh, in the model. We'll see how to get rid of it uh, later on. Okay, so let's insert uh, uh, another uh, element. As you uh, remember, it the sequence was uh, designed with two seconds, so by default we get two seconds. Let's make it four seconds. So now we have the translation. Uh, a first element whereby we rotate the wheels on the left and another one where we rotate the wheels on the left too. Okay, so this uh, gives this uh, animation. So now this element we want to transform it into a sequence, so into an element based on a sequence where uh, we rotate the wheels on the right. So you can select it and like in SketchUp, uh, when you play with components, you press this button and we say make unique. Therefore, if you press this button, so this sequence, this element will be based on a, a unique uh, sequence, a new sequence, which is called uh, spin to one. Okay, so let's change. Uh, the name to be uh, right wheel. Okay, so now what we have said is that we we are now in a, in in an autonomous uh, sequence. So we need to cancel the selection, select the two wheels on the right, and uh, we need also to change the angle, change the sign of the angle. Okay, so. Here it is. Now the wheels on the right are animated. I save this and you can check now that the wheel on the right rotate as the forklift is moved. And let's verify the other side, huh? the wheels on the left, they also uh, rotate. Okay, so this is a second way uh, to achieve the same thing. And now in the sequence uh, editor, you have the one we created, uh, spin to right wheel, the right wheel uh, spinning, which was the old uh, sequence, which now is not used, and uh, spin to for the, uh, the, the uh, wheels on the left, and of course the translation. Okay. Uh, just also to uh, remember, if you want to manage uh, uh, sequences, okay, so as I said, it's not enough to remove uh, an element from the timeline, so sequence still persists. If you really want uh, to delete a second, so it would be the equivalent to uh, delete um, a component definition from a SketchUp model, so you can manage uh, everything you create in terms of definition, so uh, the sequence from this dialog box. So you see that through the different exercise, we have created uh, the, uh, uh, a number of, uh, of uh, elements uh, of uh, sequences, okay, that we don't need. What we need is translation one, spin two, and spin two uh, right wheel. Okay, they are not in colors uh, because they are used in the animation. The other one, we can simply uh, delete them. Okay, so uh, so if I uh, delete 
these two, uh, these three uh, sequences. So I purge unused. Okay, and I save the change. Now in the list here, So purge unused. Ah, sorry, here is. So now here, I have only the sequences which are used in the animation. Okay. So here we have our animation. So translation of the forklift of the forklift and rotation of the wheel. Good idea to save. And we'll see now uh, how to group uh, these three elements. It makes sense to uh, group the three elements and the translation uh, and the spinning of the wheels uh, into one uh, element uh, because every time the forklift moves, the wheel should are supposed to uh, rotate uh, too. So in order to group, uh, it's a little bit like in uh, SketchUp, you can group component instances and uh, make a new uh, component definition out of this grouping. So you select the three uh, elements and here you have a button uh, to group these elements and a grouping by definition in Animator is called a clip. So if I uh, group the, the three elements. I will create a new sequence, actually a clip, where should, I should uh, give a name. So uh, let's put forklift move. And now my three elements are replaced by a group. This group is, uh, by convention, is in yellow. Okay, so uh, if I play the animation, same thing. Okay, I have not changed the animation by grouping, like uh, you don't change your model really, uh, the appearance of your model uh, in SketchUp if you group uh, different uh, uh, components. Okay, so now uh, I have it as a sequence. That is, I can uh, re reuse it. So let's position at the end. And now you see here, insert a clip in the timeline. If I press it, you see that I have now forklift move. So I can uh, insert it in the timeline. For example, I want uh, to make it the reverse uh, direction. So let's go back and play uh, the animation. You see that now I have two movements, uh, forward and backward, created out of the same sequence, uh, which is this uh, clip. Okay, so you can uh, later edit this clip uh, a little bit like in SketchUp, you can uh, edit a grouping. Uh, so just click on it. And you retrieve here uh, the three elements, uh, which makes uh, the uh, movement of the forklift. Okay, so you can uh, perfectly change them, and uh, this will be reflected in the grouping. Okay, so to go back to the top level, you use this uh, arrow. Okay, so again, you have a group or a clip, uh, just uh, double click and uh, edit it and then you can go back. Uh, indeed, uh, you can group uh, groups and therefore uh, a group is like another sequence. So you can insert it, you can edit it and uh, you can uh, group it with other uh, elements. So analogy uh, with uh, SketchUp. Now uh, save. Let's save the animation and uh, verify that everything is okay. Okay, as said, you can modify some parameters 
uh, of this uh, movement. For example, the dim factor, uh, I can uh, increase it by two. So now, if I play uh, the grouping, instead of 10 meters, it will go 20 meters. Okay. So uh, that's basically uh, a, a flexible way uh, to design your animation with, uh, I mean, elements which are themselves made of several atomic uh, elements. We are now going to uh, conclude uh, this first uh, tutorial. Uh, just one small thing I realized that here, they, uh, in, in, within this group, the uh, elements were not perfectly uh, aligned. I think uh, this one uh, is a little bit, uh, uh, I don't know, shifted. So let's use zero or, or maybe verify. Uh, the other ones, yeah, it's here. The precision was that uh, these two elements were not exactly at zero. Now they are perfectly aligned. Okay, so you see that when you are in a in a group or in a clip, uh, you can perfectly uh, modify uh, the element. And for example, if I did this. Uh, uh, spinning of the uh, right uh, wheel, I move it. If I play now the animation, you'll see something strange. That is, uh, the forklift stop and the wheels uh, continue to uh, uh, rotate. Okay. So one uh, last point: uh, whenever you do something, you can undo it. So. Uh, I press the undo button, or you can do uh, Control Z, and uh, you undo what uh, you have done. Okay. So, in conclusion, so you have seen in this video, which is mainly about movement, how to create an atomic uh, movement, how to uh, so which is called a sequence, how to instantiate it with a clip element in the timeline, which we can. You can position, uh, change the duration, and, and the, the placement. Uh, how you can uh, create uh, another uh, sequence and uh, group uh, sequences to form a kind of super sequence, hein, which we call a clip, uh, in order to have now a solid element uh, to your animation. OK, so basically here with this uh, yellow uh, clip, I have created what I need in the whole animation to move the forklift back and forth by any distance. So I don't need to redesign it uh, later on. So thank you very much for your attention and there will be uh, other tutorial uh, videos.